Right. Always talk about art and games is nothing more than the attempt of game designers who feel guilty about their sordid games, trying to rationalize them as, as art. Screw all that. Well, <laughs> well, so you the first thing you brought up, though, that the American puritanical values don't value just plain old fun. Yeah. Was almost, that's a, that's a more of a critique of the values than it is a critique of yes. video games. Yes. It's sort of like, well, we, we just aren't really ready for that yet. And play is important, but we're not ready to embrace it. Um, but yet, what you were trying to do with your game designs and what I'm trying to do with my game designs is sort of still rise again, rise above just plain old fun. And that was a, you said, you know, a reviewer of Balance of the Planet said it just wasn't fun. You yeah. know, and isn't that, why does my game have to be fun, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> so we are trying to get beyond fun a little bit, right? Yeah. Or me. You and I are. <laughs> but well, I'm not saying the industry is. I mean, there's, on the, main, on the mainstream, like ne this new generation of consoles, there are these games where you seriously sit there. It's a, it's a 12 hour game, but six hours are completely non interactive. You know, these, gra these high polished, three dimensional computer generated movies. They're not, they're, not, they're not on a CD ROM, they're not pre rendered. They're being rendered in the game engine, but you can't, you set your, one of them is 40 minutes long. You set your, in the middle of the game, you've been playing along, and then the character gets to a certain point, and it triggers this thing to happen, and you can just set your controller on the couch for 40 minutes, and watch your character, who you've been controlling, get out from your control for 40 minutes, and go do all these special fancy moves and action sequences, and talk to other characters, and argue with them, and so on. And then eventually the controllers return to you, right? It's the cutscene. Well, I would strongly urge you never to uh, undertake a project, a 17-year project, where you commit your whole life to it. So do you, in retrospect, do you regret embarking on this? I don't know. If it fails, I will definitely regret it. I mean, I'm, I'm dreaming small. I'm picking the low-hanging fruit here, Chris. <laughs> I work on something for a month or two. Maybe it fails, maybe it succeeds, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, most of the things I embark on, I'm pretty sure. Hey, I, I, I can see how that, that's probably gonna work. <laughs> well, see, one thing but you... But some things need a full 17 years. One thing you have done that is very... that gives you a lot more freedom is that you are not so wedded to materialistic stuff. Right. You have, uh, you know, low burn rate. Well, <clears throat> I'll tell you why, Chris. Um, you know, I'm sort of fishing around for something to work on right now. And, and there's some other projects that may be coming, coming down the line and so on. But if I get, if I get like, a, a few weeks where I uh, really feel at sea for something to work on, I'll try and make a story well. <laughs> Actually, I would advise against that. Really? You're exploring a very interesting angle. And I think you should... You should follow your nose a bit further. I don't think you should, uh, you know, follow my work. I do think it might be useful for you to uh, look over some of the concepts, you know, learn, learn a little bit about my technology, just to, you know, maybe steal a few good ideas. From. <laughs> but... Um, well, no, I, I guess I just thought, you know, maybe there's... <clears throat> I'm a programmer. Right, <laughs> and I'm a pretty good programmer, and I'm not. I'm not talking about helping you with the programming, but what I'm saying is, there's a lot of people who are probably trying to make story worlds, who are struggling with it, but they're not. Pro they may not be programmers themselves. They're coming at it from like they're, they're, yeah. they're maybe fiction writers, or maybe yeah. they've written a little interactive fiction or something. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I don't really have trouble really grappling with really complicated systems and so on. I mean, it seems like something I might be able to tackle. Maybe I could do something interesting with it. You know, maybe I could provide you with a story world that, you know, that I'd be proud of as a creator that would do some sort of push the boundaries of the medium, and so, of the mediums of, of interactive storytelling, potentially, but also of 
you know, the medium of games or, or whatever I whatever I created it might kind of be something that some people could sort of see as a game, maybe, and maybe I'd do something cool with it. Maybe I'd maybe I'd make that television set and that you never thought anyone would make, and it'd be an interesting component, you know. Yeah. You know, in my story world, and it would make you think about things in a new way. And well, see the the thing that. You have a maybe very I'd waste my time. Is, it, is that what you're saying, that I should no, spend my time I, also? You have a very interesting and very different style of thinking about these problems than I do. And so I think you should follow that style. Now, I understand the idea that you, you've sort of run out of gas on this, on this uh, run. Right. But that doesn't mean you should, you should stop. Maybe what I would suggest is first back up a little... Spend some time learning about metaphor in the larger sense. I feel very strongly a good game designer has to be know everything. Right. And the most important thing to remember is do not be prescriptive, be descriptive. <laughs> so. of which I am most proud. Trust and Betrayal was a just yeah, well, we wild haven't talked fling about that. In, a, in a completely different direction. Now, that was on the Macintosh as well, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And actually... And I have played it. I have played it a little bit of it. Oh. So, so this is the game where, and this is actually kind of funny because it kind of connects back to Between in a little bit, where you, you go at night into this dream state. Yeah, yeah. And you're dealing with these essentially psychic animals. Yes. Um, yes. That that you're having dream battles with. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess after this, I, I do need to <laughs> go back and boot up the old Macintosh and, and and get some of these things running again to, to to really take a closer look at them. I don't know. I don't think I don't think <laughs> they're that important. Uh, well, I I don't know. I I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean they're not that important? <laughs> uh, Ancient history. Well, see, that's the funny thing, though, is, like, again, we come back to the idea that in our medium, a ancient history becomes irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they... Uh, we're, so you said we're, we're, we're writing with sand. Or the, your friend said that. And and, um, and it doesn't seem like that should be the case. Like, I, you know, I went back and tried to play Mule. I, I, it was before my time, essentially. I consider Mule to be the finest computer game design in history. Not that it's as good a game now as some of the games now, but because... Before its place in history, also. Yeah, for its place in history, it was absolutely a sensational design uh, for a lot of reasons. Well, as you play more and more, and as the resources get tighter and tighter, you sort of start to come to realize that if you stamp them into the ground completely, yeah. You actually depend on each other yeah. for survival on this planet. Yeah. And if you actually play the complete cutthroat capitalist, you're going to end up kind of hurting all of you and hurting yourself in yeah. the end because yeah. you, you can't get the resource that they have or whatever. And so that hidden in the mechanics is this sort of um, message about how we need to temper our capitalist, pure capitalism and so on. But it only comes out of the mechanics. Yeah. Right? That era, wow. You know, looking back and reading about it and hearing about, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you, probably you and, and other folks that you were very closely associated with, game designers, probably played a lot of Mule. No? Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. I just can't even imagine sitting down at a real computer with four real joysticks and looking at that, you know, that Electronic Arts out of all the companies, their ad from back in the day when they were announcing sort of their new company. Can a computer make you cry? 